Paul and the Written Mosaic Law, page 39. Did Paul personally practice and publicly teach the law of Moses after his paradigm shift from rabbinic oral law to the acceptance of Yeshua? Let us take a look at his writings and see if there is an answer to this question. Acts 21, 23 through 24, and Acts 18, 18. We know that Paul participated in what is called a Nazarite vow in the temple of Jerusalem. This is based on Bamid Bar, Numbers 6, 13 through 21. Acts 13, 42, 17, 2, and 18, 4. We know that Paul observed the Holy Shabbat and, in fact, taught many people on Shabbat. 1 Corinthians 5, 8. We know that Paul kept the Feast of Passover. Acts 20, verse 16. We know that Paul observed the festival of Shavuot, Pentecost, in Jerusalem. Ephesians 4, 25. We know that he believed in observing the words of the prophets. Zechariah 8, 16. And the words of the writings. Psalm 4, 4. 1 Corinthians 11, 1. We know that Paul tried to imitate Yeshua and required his followers to do the same. Ephesians 6, 1. We know that Paul believed in the teachings of the Proverbs, 6.20 and 23.22. Ephesians 6.2, we know that Paul believed in observing the Ten Commandments that were given to Moses at Mount Sinai, Exodus 20, verse 12, and Deuteronomy 5.16. 1 Timothy 1, 8 through 11, we know that Paul called the Torah of Moses sound teaching. 1 Timothy 4.13, we know that Paul told some of his followers to be present for the public readings of the Torah and to listen to its words. 1 Timothy 5.17, we know that Paul believed in the Torah's teaching that we must not cheat each other out of the work that we do to earn our wages. Deuteronomy 25.4. 1 Timothy 6.3, we know that Paul called the teachings of the Torah teacher Yeshua sound words, and that if anyone teaches a different doctrine other than what Yeshua taught, that he is conceited and understands nothing. We know Yeshua taught the written Torah. Second Timothy 3.8, we know that Paul referred to Moses and his teachings as truth. Second Timothy 4.3, we know that Paul called the Torah sound doctrine, as he supported this in 1 Timothy 1, 8 through 11 2 Timothy 2.15, we know that Paul called the Torah the word of truth. 2 Timothy 3.15-16, we know that Paul called the Tanakh sacred writings and that they contain wisdom for every aspect of everyday life. Acts 14.12-18, we know that Paul accepted the teachings of the Torah in regards to its instructions against idolatry and the worship of mere men. Deuteronomy 32.21, Jeremiah 8.19, and Jeremiah 14.22. Acts 15.22-31, through 31, we know that Paul believed in and taught the Torah laws regarding consuming blood from Leviticus 17.10 and 18.19. He taught against lewdness and fornication from Leviticus chapter 18, and he taught kashrut or kosher laws according to Leviticus chapter 17 verse 13. Acts 21, 27 through 29, we know that Paul had accusers saying that he was breaking the Torah and violating the words of the prophet Ezekiel in 44, 7. Acts 23, 5, we know that Paul believed in the Torah and in its teaching regarding honor due to the Kohanim from Exodus 22, 28. Acts 24, 14, we know that Paul believed and trusted in the authority and validity of all the written Torah commandments and the prophets. Romans 3.31, we know that Paul believed that the written Torah commandments had to be upheld, maintained, and established, at least according to the Greek word that is used in this passage, that of histemi, Strong's number 2476. Romans 13.8-9, we know that Paul accepted the Decalogue of Jehovah and its commandments against adultery, murder, stealing, coveting, and the law of Leviticus 19.18 that sums up the Torah in regards to loving your neighbor as yourself. Romans 16.25-27, we know that Paul called the writings of the prophets Scripture, and that this Scripture was able to lead the Gentiles or the nations into obedience and trusting faith in Jehovah. 1 Corinthians 14.21, we know that Paul called the writings of the prophet Isaiah the law, and he accepted his teaching. 2 Corinthians 6, 14 through 7, 1. We know that Paul believed that we must try to be separate, 
holy, and walk in purity. And the only way to accomplish this is through observance of that which is written in the law of Moses. He also taught that the message of Yeshua was one in the same with the authority of the written Torah. 2 Corinthians 13.1 We know that Paul applied the law, Deuteronomy 19.15, to his teachings given to this particular group of Corinthian believers. It appears from this overview study in the life and teachings of Paul that he was a teacher of and a believer in all that was written in the Torah, the prophets, and the writings. It also appears that Paul's views line up perfectly with the overall structure of scriptural truth that has been passed down to all future generations of Israelites. In other words, taking into account this entire study from Moses in Devorim to the prophets, to the writings, to Yeshua's words, to the written in documents of Yeshua's Talmudim, including Yochanan, Keva, and Yeshua's own brother Yaakov in his letter, it appears that Paul was teaching his followers to believe in what we call today the Tanakh, the Torah, the prophets, and the writings. It appears from Paul himself that he could never deny that Yeshua was the full embodiment of these eternal words, according to 1 Corinthians 12.3 and Hebrews 1.2. Therefore, if anyone has some reservation about Paul's doctrinal position, I would suggest a thorough reading of all that I quoted above, of course, in its context. Also, I think it would be expedient and, in fact, very wise to re-examine the words of Peter, who said concerning the writings of Paul, Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found by him in peace spotless and blameless, and regard the patience of our Master to be salvation, just as also our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, wrote to you, as also in all his letters, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to understand, which the untaught and unstable distort, as they do also the rest of the Scriptures to their own destruction." Second Peter three fourteen through sixteen. No wonder there are so many people out there who think that Paul was a snake, an evil teacher, a renegade against Mosaic Torah truth. It appears that in reality they are people who are untaught and unstable because they filter written scripture through rabbinic oral law, or equally worse church tradition. Many refuse to accept anything that might change their minds. To the contrary, of course, the heretical influences of Marcion in the second century have not helped. As a result, they are bent on distorting Paul, distorting the words of Yeshua, and distorting the embodiment of Brit Hadashah truth, because spiritually these are people that are compromised and influenced by forces that keep good people in chains. For these types of people, judgment may fall if they do not repent, because by their mouths they spew Lashon Hara, the evil tongue, all the while negatively influencing good Jews and others, I'm sure, that Paul was an antinomian, meaning against the law of Moses, and that Yeshua was a cursed Torah breaker. From what I have seen in my own objective study of the matter, I am hard-pressed to find any evidence that would judge Paul as anything less than an honest man with an honest approach to teaching written Torah truth. Again, and I say with no reservations, it appears to me that the people most unstable and untaught in the written Torah of yud heh are those who are enslaved to either the customs of the nations or to the rabbinic teachings that Yehovah himself calls the learned commandments of men in Isaiah 29.13. In our next chapter,